Today's journey takes us to St. Augustine, Florida. St. Augustine was founded in 1565 by Spanish explorers. It is the oldest continuously inhabited European established settlement in the United States. It was founded by Pedro Menendez de Aviles. He was Florida's first governor. The city was the capital of Spanish Florida for over 200 years. It cost us $18 a person to get into the Fountain of Youth. Be over 508 years old, okay? Left by one Ponte de Leon and his men. Uh, and the water is at the bottom of the center. The first stop was the Spring House. In the late 1800s, Florida had several natural springs that were fabled the fountain youth. They were sought by Ponce de Leon in 1513. In the well house is the fountain. That's where we got to drink the water. I drank my cup full up. Tim was less than impressed by the taste of it.
1868, Henry H. William purchased a piece of land just outside of St. Augustine for $2,500. Williams was familiar with the history of Ponce de Leon and experienced his first visitors that same year. Henry called the place Paradise Grove because of the flowers and the fruit. He didn't think much of the spring, though, so he welled it up and used it to mix the mortar. In 1900, Henry sells the property to Dr. Luella de McConnell. Luella called it Neptune Park and opened a small museum. Insight into the historical importance of this, the first successful colonial cultural interaction between an advanced European and the North American Aboriginal culture. Thus, the beginning of recorded United States colonial history. Indian burial grounds in the United States. On April 13, 1934, while planting orange trees, a gardener accidentally came upon the first skeleton. The authorities, having been notified, determined the bones to be of an aboriginal Indian. The Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. was therefore contacted, and several days later, Dr. Matthew Sterling, director of the Department of Ethnology and Archaeology, came and positively identified the burial as a Tuukuan Indian male, interred under Christian influence. It was a major find. A month later, Dr. Sterling, with the Institute staff, set up camp and excavated some 47 Catholic burials of Tuukuan Indians.
This is the reconstructed Tibaquid village. When Pedro Menendez de Avilas landed here, he did so at a bustling town that was a tool and pottery making center of activity. The Timaqua were governed by a chief named Saturoa. In 2013, the reconstruction was completed of a historically correct large family house, a special meeting house. During scheduled times, they have living history interpreters that will help you understand what day-to-day -day life was like in the village, how they hunted, fished, and made fine pottery. Here is a canoe that they used to travel by water. The canoes were fashioned using a method that included burning and scraping. Next is the Mission Church Nombre de Dios. It was built in 1587. Welcome to Nombre de Dios, the Mission Church of Colonial St. Augustine. Meaning the name of God, Nombre de Dios derived its name from the reverent words of Pedro Benendez de Avilés in 1565 when he founded St. Augustine in the name of God. Established in 1587, Father Escobedo consecrated this as the first Catholic mission church in what is now the United States. The Spanish missions of Florida became especially important once European diseases began decimating Native American civilizations. Native people flocked to the missions once they saw the priests were not afflicted by the pandemic of disease. Over the next 137 years, Navarrete's reserves the Spanish chain of missions that would string like a pearl necklace from present day South.
Here's the memorial statue of Ponce de Leon. The next stop is the historic weapons. The blacksmith exhibit offers a glimpse into St. Augustine's past through the accurate historical interpretation. Here is a memorial for the landing site from 1513 when Ponce de Leon reached the land in Avenet, Florida. Next we have the Watchtower in the Founders River Walk. Spanish Watchtowers of St. Augustine help centuries see farther and to discover threats earlier. When St. Augustine was founded, the spyglass had yet to be invented. Only the sharpest eyed men were he had picked for watch. Sir Francis Drake, with 2,000 men and 42 ships, spotted a light in the coastal St. Augustine Watchtower. Had the Watchtower not had a light burning, he might have missed the town entirely. Drake and his men sacked, looted, and burned the entire town in wooden fort. Next, there's the weapons demonstrations that bring the 16th century to life. And then firing of the day here in St. Augustine, Fountain of Youth. Thanks for coming, by the way. We appreciate your visit. 
What we're going to show you here are a couple of weapons that Pedro Menendez de Avalos and his men brought to the New World in September of 1565. I'm sure you probably recognize this as a crossbow. Behind me is the cannon we're going to fire for. You. Now, both of these weapons had something in common in 1565. They were obsolete. And the reason they're here is because they were cheap to buy. Now, when you were a leader or you wanted to have an expedition go to the New World, the way Spain worked these things was you as a leader responsible for finding all the money, all the financing for your voyage. The crown didn't put in any kind of money at all. Most of these guys, like Pizarro, Cortez, De Soto, had to have investors, people that would lend him money and expect a return on their investment. Uh, and the point I'm trying to make is that... Um, he only had a limited amount of money to spend on his uh, expedition. So, like all of us, when we have limited money, we try to make it go as far as we possibly can. And Menendez wasn't doing anything different. He was looking for things that would be useful, but not expensive. Now, around 1490, the crossbow fell out of favor as a frontline weapon. Uh, it was just too hard to produce, and uh, it did take a bit of skill to So our cannon is a replica. It's not original. It's a very good copy of the types of cannons that Pedro Menendez and his men brought here in 1565. In fact, he brought 20 cannons that go out like the one on the platform and fortified this area right in through here with those. So not only is the field behind you, but it's the settlement here in St. Augustine. And then my camera died. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. Thank you.